but no problem. Okay. Uh, today's, I, I will introduce the chair, and the chair will, of course, use, uh, introduce the keynote. Today we have, I think, a very interesting chair for the keynote, because in Denmark we don't do a lot about creativity, not uh, yet at least, and, and certainly not about creative writing. But one of those that really knows something about this topic is uh, Jo, who is going to be presenting uh, Eunice Allenkar. And you was the former head of the National Authors Association, and we also used to work together at the School for Gifted Children. So please welcome her, and thank you. Thank you, Tina. I'm delighted and honored to present to you Dr. Eunice Alenka. From the very beginning of her academic career, Eunice Alenkar has focused on creativity, and especially on how creativity can be fostered in the classroom and among the gifted. As a professor of psychology, she's been a pioneer within the field in Brazil, where she, among other things, has developed a line of research on creativity in educational and organizational contexts at the University of Brasilia. She's also the author of numerous books that have endeared her to a large number of readers. A few days ago, I had the chance to participate in a pre-conference workshop that Eunice Alenka gave together with Denise Flight on how to foster the students' creativity in the classroom. It soon became evident that Eunice has a keen understanding of the social implications of creativity. To enhance creativity, it is not enough to bolster the creativity of each person individually. You also need to create an environment that is receptive to it. Hindrances to creativity can be social as well as personal, and that's where teachers can make a real difference. I look forward to hearing more about creativity in the school session, and let's welcome Eunice Alenkar. Good morning. Okay. Well, I am extremely honored to be here in this conference. And uh, I'd like to thank the executive committee for the invitation, for the opportunity to focus in this lecture, a topic that I started studying more than 40 years ago when I was a graduate student at Purdue University and I had classes with Donald Treffinger and John Feldhusen, who were well known for their leadership in the field of creativity and giftedness. Well, I'd like also to, th I'd like to thank all of you who are here. Thank you very much. I'm honored with your presence. Well, my intention in this presentation is to focus on four topics. I will start highlighting briefly the importance of fostering creativity in education. After that, I'm going to address some challenges to the nurturance of creativity in the school setting, uh, and some strategies, some pathways to the blooming of creativity in the school. And to finalize, I'm going to address some strategies of creati creativity assessment, uh, sharing with you some of some instruments that I and my colleagues at the University of Brasilia in our research group on creativity and giftedness developed. But uh, as a starting point, I'd like to remember the words of a Chinese philosopher, Quan Tzu, that in the third century before Christ stated, if we plan for a year, we have to plan serious. 
If you plan for a decade, you have to plant trees. If we plan for a life, we have to instruct and to educate men. To, I like this. We have to educate children. And uh, which should be the aims of education in this century? Which skills and competencies should be fostered in the educational setting nowadays besides character strengths and some virtues such as honesty, respect, and solidarity? In my opinion, there is too much discussion about skills, competencies, but it's of far most importance to work, to, to do a good work, uh, developing and practice and giving the, impor uh, the, the real, uh, real importance to these virtues, especially in some countries, especially among gifted children, many of them will be leaders, so this is of foremost importance. But which skills and competences should be fostered? Um, this question has been discussed by educators, by governments in many, many, many countries in all of the, all of the world. For example, uh, in a recent book, Treffinger, uh, the book is Education for Creativity in Edu Education, Creativity, Education for Creativity and in Innovation, Treffinger, Schoenover, and Selby presented several reports about this issue. And in one of them, which was prepared by a team of government leaders, community leaders, um, and business leaders, they included several survival skills which are that need for instruction. They were considered very important nowadays. And they are creativity and innovation, critical thinking, problem solving. We know that one complement the other and communication and collaboration. Also, I went to Confratude a few years ago and Renzulli in his address and also in a paper, in an article that he shared with us, written with Sally Rees, uh, he called attention also to several skills that need to be practiced that need to be developed in the schools. These are just some of them. Monitor one's understanding and the need for additional information. Formulate meaningful questions. Generate reasonable arguments, explanations, hypotheses, and ideas using an appropriate vocabulary and concepts. Uh, extend one thing and beyond the information given. I'm not going to read all because you are going to read much faster than me. Work effectively with others and communicate effectively in different genres and formats. A great challenge for many educators in many countries, in my opinion. Well, you know, why is it important to foster creativity in the education setting? Uh, we could remember that one of the reasons one is the need to prepare a student to live in, uh, in, this, in a moment of history which is characterized by a great degree of instability and complexity an astonishing progress in many areas, as for example, in technological, in, techno in technology, which requires that we are open, that we, are, we learn all the time. And also, you know that there is an increasing pace of change with many, many challenges and unpredictable problems that require creative solutions. This is probably the reason why Chicks and Mihal in a book, in a, the preface of a book on high, creativity in higher education, is stated. 
In the Renaissance, creativity might have been a luxury for the few, but by now it's a necessity for all. This, this discusses the present in many, many scholars nowadays. But there is another reason for the, uh, for the importance of creativity. It's the association between creativity and mental health. We know that the creative expression is a positive subjective experience that contributes to emotional welfare. During the workshops, everybody were, they, were, they had many challenges in our workshops. Right, Joe? And everybody were playing, they were, when they had an idea, they smiled. It was a very, I was observing the face of the participants. It was great. Well, but I have also to remember that to suppress the development of the creative potential restricts the possibilities of a complete realization and expression of multiple talents. Well, in spite of the increasing awareness of the importance of creativity, there are many and many challenges. And I'm going to share with you some of these challenges. One of them uh, is this, the numerous misconceptions about creativity, which are common among people in general, among teachers and students. For example, the idea that creativity is a rare phenomenon segregated in a specialized domains such as arts and inventions. In general, people associate creativity with great productions in arts, in science, and uh, we know the big C creativity, yeah? but we know that creativity is also present in everyday life. I like very much uh, the analogy that Vygotsky presented this idea. He compared creativity with electricity. And he reminded us that uh, the electricity is present during a thunderstorm and dazzling light, lightning, but it's also present in a lamp. So also creativity. Creativity is present in great works, but is also present in everyday life. Another misconception is the view of creativity as a natural talent present only in a few individuals, or the uh, association of creativity with the eureka, the inspirational, in the inspiration moment which occurs without an explainable reason. And we know the important role of dedication, preparation, conscious efforts, and extensive knowledge in a, in a specific area for the people, for the person to give as prerequisites for a creative production of a higher level. And also uh, the idea that creativity is dependent only on personal factors. And do you all know the important role of several variables of the social context? Uh, we have many studies, and here is an illustration of one of these misconceptions. We had in, a study, in this study, 64 engineering students participated and were interviewed about uh, facilitating and inhibiting factors to creativity, to personal creativity. And one, and one student said during the interview, I don't think of myself as a creative person. I don't have many solutions for a problem, for example but I have many friends who come up with many alternatives. They are creative people. I think they are all read like this, and we're always like this. For me, it's a gift, and I wasn't born with it. You know, it's, we, we, we observe that this idea is very common nowadays 
is still very common nowadays. Another cha uh, challenge is um, traditional pedagogical practices and values that we observe in many, many places. For example, uh, an, an exaggerated emphasis on the correct response. The students learn since very early that they cannot make mistakes, reinforcing the fear of making errors and fear of failure. Well, it's embarrassing not to know the, not to have the response. Uh, I like this cartoon. We human beings have some strategies to escape some situations. The students said, May I go out, teacher? And the teacher said, yes, you can. And Nancy was on his chair. The teacher asked, Nancy, where are you going out? She answered, well, only when you get to the chapter that I didn't study, in a strategy not to feel embarrassed. Well, we, in several studies and also in workshops, we asked, the participants to complete the following sentence. I would be more creative if, and a common response is, I were not afraid of making mistakes. This, in several of our, of our studies, we observe that this is a frequent response uh, and others such as, I were less insecure and less afraid, I did not fear what other people think about me. I did not consider my ideas inferior to those of other people. Well, if the, another challenge is the emphasis on the students' obedience, passivity, and conformity. Instead of reinforcing personality characteristics, which are fundamental to a better development and expression of students' potentialities. Um, I like Einstein's word in a book that was printed in 1981 when he said that's just a miracle that the modern teaching methods did not destroy completely the sacred curiosity which mobilizes investigation. We know that curiosity is in the fundamental of our work as scientists. Curiosity, this is important, the, which, which everybody is curious, the human being is cu curious, the mammiferous are curious. There are studies showing that even the birds that are curious, they face dangerous situation to know other territories, for example. Uh, a big challenge, uh, in many countries, I would say my country, is the extensive content of the adopted curriculum. Too much information students need to learn and memorize to be successful in the evaluation tests. This happens. And this explains, uh, maybe helps to explain why there is a scarcity of opportunities for students to explore and express their creative potential. Here, uh, in the same study, we have, uh, I, I bring, I have here some answers of some reflections, some of engineering students, which uh, illustrates this challenge. In the classroom, the content is transmitted, and we are obli uh, obliged to be seated and see only that explanation. You have no opportunity to do differently. There is no motivation. The teacher doesn't ask. And you, a student, do you have a better idea about this? Teaching is unidirectional. It's only from teacher to us. The teacher may even be offended if you express an opinion to him. Another. Here in college, what's lacking in relation to creativity is the incentive to create, to have new ideas. Well, we also observe an exaggerated emphasis on the logical thinking, and lack of consideration of fantasy and imagination 
as important aspects to be taken into account. There are several studies calling attention to the role of imagination in, this, in the, in the uh, work of scientists, for example. I like very much a poster which was distributed by UNICEF in many, many countries because there were different rights. One of them was the right to fantasize. And uh, it's common in some countries, children, to start working very, very early. It's also common in, I'm going to, an example of my country, in public, in private schools, too much homework. Children have no place, no, no time to play because so many exercises, so many, so much homework. I, I, uh, my, this happened with my children. This continues happening with my grandchildren. Too much homework, too much things to do, in my opinion. Uh, also, we observe that there is low expectations about the student's creative potential on the part of the many teachers who call attention much more to the student's ignorance and capacity than to the competencies. I have four children. When I was asked to go to school, I was just this, oh my God, what happened? I have four, bo I have four boys. In general, I have never been called to say, well, your uh, Alexandra is doing very well in the school, for example, but many times, oh, Ricardo, he needs, oh my goodness, Ricardo, Ricardo, he, oh, my, oh my goodness. Not, not, I have never been called to say, yo, Leonardo is doing very well, only, I, I, this happened to me many. Well, here are some cartoons who show something like that. Chico, do you, do you know who are the three most used words by students? I don't know. Uh, well done, you got it. I talked to my teacher about my vocational test and she told me that by the results I can execute any function with incompetence. Well, we know the power of words, and we know the teacher has much more power than they believe they have. Sometimes I, when I give workshops in self-concept, I ask people to remember things that happened in their school life that they could not forget, a good thing or a bad thing. And I have people who are old, more than 80 years old, who remember some words of, the, some words of his teacher when, or her teacher in the first grade. It's impressive, the memory. We also observe that there is low recognition by teachers of alternative ways to solve problems suggested by students students, pressure to conform, express that so then flexible curriculum and unchanging classroom activities, this happens many times, traditional classes, and prejudice against the students that make questions, criticize or disagree with teachers' ideas. I read, I like reading biographies and I, I have Many of the most creative, several of the most creative people complained that were punished for having many, many, many questions, for example. Well, uh, an illustration, Cropley, in his book, Creativity in Edu Education, Creativity in Teaching and Education, I think this is the name of the book, she presented, he, I'm sorry, he presented some studies, and in one of, the, uh, of these studies, uh, uh, engineering students were the participants, 
and the results indicated that students who preferred trying new solutions dropped out of engineering course three times more frequently than those who preferred conventional solutions, for example. We also have to uh, stay uh, to say that we observe that the lack, lack of teachers' preparation to promote creativity in the classroom. This happens in my country, and this happens also in other countries. Uh, here, uh, we have a study. For example, this is the results of a study that we had uh, elementary school principals, more than 100 elementary school principals, who completed our checklist of obstacles that can hinder adequate conditions for creativity in the classroom. And according to more 70.3% um, of the principals, uh, a teacher has no familiarity with pedagogical practices that might be used to promote students' creative development. And so, according to them, lack of enthusiasm for the teaching activity, this is very serious. Uh, a high number of students in the classroom, insecurity to test pedagogical, new pedagogical practices, a familiarity with materials, books, and articles on how to implement creativity in the classroom were some other response with a high number of high, per high per percentage of uh, principals who checked uh, this these items. So I have several studies with this checklist with, dif with the different members of the school team. Also, I would like also to remember the difficult teachers have to break free from previous teaching practices. It's not easy to create a new habit, for example. We have a poet in Brazil, Mario Quintana, who said, the past is the present they refuse to pass. It's difficult to, to break, for example. But, uh, but we know that if we do what we always did, we will continue obtaining the results we always obtained. Well, I like uh, Begito uh, in one book. He remembered that he highlighted the importance of teachers' prior experience as a student, the influence of this prior experience in, the pra in teachers' practices. And he stated the tendency is to reproduce in the classroom the pedagogical practices teachers experienced as students. After, and then some of them had 10,000 hours of school before, or 12,000 hours. There are some studies showing how many thousand hours we still have in schools. Uh, there, some of this, it's, uh, it's uh, due to some of these challenges that schools for children sometimes is not a place that they enjoy, they are happy. Here I have this, uh, this cartoon. I have many cartoons about this. Uh, and they, uh, Nancy said, to, I can't sleep, Auntie. And, and, and she answered, try to think about something pleasant. And uh, Nancy imagined that she was reading the newspaper and it's, it was reading. Schools are closed until the end of the month, and she sleeps happily. Uh, vacation, when there is a free day, children are very happy. Well, uh, some answers. My school is like, we have uh, many years ago, so I, I don't have recent date on this, we asked children to complete the following sentence. My school is like, and some answers were just a dis uh, disguised prize and a jail from 
which I can escape a precipice, the purgatory, the most boring place in the world, oh, too sad. A book that you are obliged to read, and if you don't like it, a garden without flowers. A paradise, oh, this is great. The home I'd like to have. For many, many children, the school is better than their own house. I, I, we, we have, I know this, at least in my country, this happens due to impoverished conditions and other problems. Well, and how to, how to foster creativity in the schools? Which strategies we could use to foster, to nurture creativity? Well, uh, I, my intention is to share with you the model that has guided me in working with teachers, elementary school teachers especially. But before that, I'd like to say that there, there are many good models. For example, Renzulli's model for the development of creative people, uh, creative pr productivity in young people, because he calls attention to some aspects of the teacher, as for example, knowledge of the discipline, romance with the discipline, instructional, technology, some elements of the learner, you know that we are, we, we influence the learner, but we are also influenced by them. And some aspects of the curriculum, for example, the content and methodology of the discipline. I like this model, model very, very much. We have studies to me, uh, giving results a little bit different, but I'm not going to talk to him. I'd like us to share with you uh, Dr. Klaus Urban, uh, who was a former president of the World Council. He also has this model that's very interesting, very important to be known by, by, by teachers with many important information. But um, uh, in my... My model uh, includes for five dimensions, I would say. In my opinion, if you want to foster our creative abilities, if we want to, to develop the student's creative ability, if we want to use be better our pot creative potential, uh, we should, for example, a reinforce some personality traits. Some of them are related, associated with motivation. As, for example, just a few examples. Curiosity, self-confidence, persistence, uh, flexibility, courage. There are many, many others, but I, I chose this just to share. And... Um, I like very much the words of Eric Fromm. Eric Fromm, who was a psychologist, a psychoanalyst, a philosopher, a sociologist, who wrote many, many books. I, when I was uh, at the university, his book, The Art of Loving, was a bestseller in my country. Oh, oh we, we, you are young people read The Art of Loving, and he said in one of his books, he wrote in one of his books, without courage and faith, creativity does not exist. Because we know that there are many weapons that kill new ideas. But the most dangerous of them are the weapons that we have inside of us. And, and we kill. We don't say some of our ideas. We have to have courage. The uh, hollow may the, the courage to create many and faith to rely on yourselves, to have self confidence. Well, some suggestions that how how to reinforce how a students' personality traits, for example. Uh, stimulate students' curiosity with open-ended activities that encourage explorations and questions. Instill students with confidence in their competencies and capacities and their willingness to take risk. You have to have success experience for you to rely on yourself. 
I encourage students to present and to defend their ideas. And, uh, and the other dimension are the, uh, is the creative thinking. We, uh, we know that several uh, abilities, uh, cognitive abilities, which are, are associated with creative thinking, such as fluency, originality, metaphorical thinking, analogical thinking. And uh, so, um, some suggestions. In general, we in our workshop, when, in, when we work with, with, with teachers, we ask the teachers to give this how they could and to try them and to come back and inform the results. Give the students opportunity to express their ideas, value students' original ideas, make challenging questions which motivate students to think and to reason, Teach students to revise, refine, sculpt their creative ideas. This is very important. Sylvia, remember yesterday that when we write a book, you revise and revise and revise an article the same. When, my, when uh, somebody told me, when a student told me, oh, I, your, your article was very, very good. I did love it. My answer, well, you read a nice edition. This is not my first edition. If you saw, I couldn't sh The first edition was completely different. You have to sculpt. Uh, uh, teachers could help the student to reduce some emotional blocks, for example. Uh, for, uh, for example, the fear of not corresponding to the expectations of people that they value, or fear of being criticized, fear of making mistakes, uh, feelings of inferiority, insecurity. Uh, so teachers can do a lot to help students in these directions. For example, teachers should ha um, may help students unravel their emotional blocks, like fear of making mistakes, fear of being criticized, inferiority feelings, and insecurity. Uh, I am a professor, and when a student tell me, please don't call me ahead of uh, ahead of the room because I feel so scared. I say, oh, thank you for telling me this. I'm going to call you many times because you have to be a leader. You have to defend your ideas, so you have to go ahead of the class. I, I do this, it, and this helps. I tell oh, you, are not going to die because you come to the front. You are in a, we would like to help you. Help students to deal with frustration and failure. If you want to, well, everybody needs to, to learn with failure. If you want to use the most possible your creative potential, sometimes you are going to have experience of failure. Motivate students to master factual knowledge as a social, solid basis to propose new ideas. Knowledge is important. Expertise in a specific topic is also important. Well, there are several techniques, and uh, together is domain, besides domain-specific knowledge that also help us to have better ideas. In the first day, uh, Shirley Cockett, remember, for example, the bonus uh, thinking tools, the cohort problems, uh, several principles of CPS, brainstorming, and synaptics, for example, they help us to think better ideas, to have more ideas, because, you know, for example, quantity of ideas leads to quality of ideas. If you have many, many ideas, the possibility of having the probability of having a good idea is mm, greater. That's why when you write, for, for example, a book, the title, it's not simple sometimes to find a title for a book. So we have to think many, many titles and uh, to choose the best title. But we also know the climate is very important. People, we are very sensitive to climate. 
the human beings to the psychological climate because we need the human being is recognition. The human beings need love. To, the human beings need to be to feel valued. Uh, and we know that ideas are fragile. Much important are the environments that originate them and let them grow. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I see creativity as a delicate flower. It does not resist to a climate characterized by excess of criticism and censure. It needs to be continually nurtured. A uh, good climate for creativity is when there is a predominance of feelings of freedom and security to innovate, to explore and to express ideas without being afraid of evaluation. This is a challenge in this climate is great. We know that if the person believes that he or she will be criticized, ridiculed or threatened, he or she will not express new ideas hampering his or her creativity. Some suggestions for promoting creative climate. Promoting an environment of respect and acceptance for a student's ideas. Trust the student's abilities and competencies. Support the expression of new ideas. Only expose the students to constructive criticism. Protect the students' production from destructive criticism and smearing coming from co their colleagues. Well, the colleagues bullying sometimes, I think we know that happens, and other uh, criticisms, the colleagues also have many power. I, teacher has power, but the classmates also, and because the students need to be accepted by the group, we know that. Well, strategies of creative assessment, creativity assessment. Uh, there are, uh, the cre there are se several purposes for creativity assessment. Here are just some of them. Uh, for example, to provide pre-test and post-test data for group comparisons for research and uh, or evaluation. I mean, in several of our studies, we, ha we use pre-test and post-test to evaluate, for example, a, a creativity program for teachers. And it helps, and we have control group, experimental group, everything that you, all of you know well. Help instructors, counselors, or individuals discover unrecognized or untapped talent resource. In my opinion, we don't know ourselves. We learn about the world, we learn about the, the, what, what we have inside our body, but many, many of us don't have the opportunity to know ourselves, to know our talents, to know our strong points. Help to remove creativity from, from the realm of, mis of mystery and superstition. Oh, well, there are many, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of instruments that have been developed, that were developed have, in this last 70, 70, 65 years since Guilford's, Guilford's first tests on creative thinking, for example, and the 60s Torrance tests, well, the first edition of the Torrance test, and the scales and inventories. Every day you have more inventories, checklists. Observation also is very important um, as a strategy for creative assessment, and of course, portfolios. Well, I, am, I, I decide instead of, I, I am very proud, we are very proud of this book, Theory and Practice of Creativity, of Creativity Measurement, because it's our only book in English. It's very difficult for us from some countries to publish book in, in English because they don't believe, the editors, they don't believe that they, the books will sell because they are not known. So it's very, very difficult. 
So, unfortunately, so yeah. But that's the reason why I publish in our language, because there it's, and I'm lucky. Well, my first book was wrote 40 years ago, uh, has 70 edition. Well, I cannot talk, my time is, yeah. Well, so just an illustration of some of our instruments. One of the instruments uh, is the Classroom Climate for Creativity Scale. Professor Denise Flight is uh, here. Uh, and is the author, the first author of this instrument. It was designed to be completed by elementary school students. It has 20, 22 items in an uh, in a five-point scale. And this instrument, in the validation, the first validation study, it, uh, it resulted in five factors. Um, one factor is teacher support to the student expression of ideas, just one item. The teacher pays attention to my ideas. Uh, another student's percep self-perception of creativity, one item. I have many ideas, or I think I'm creative. Students' interest in learning. I like the, I, I like the content taught. Students' autonomy. I can make choice about what I want to do. A teacher's incentive to a student's ideas production. The teacher asks me to think of new ideas. These are some of the items. Here, here's the format of the instrument uh, for, because it's for young children. It's not for adults, for example. Uh, another instrument that we developed was the inventory of teaching practices for creativity in higher education with 37 items, which are answered in a five-point scale, and it measures four factors. This instrument has been used also in studies conducted in Portugal because we have you know, the same language. And one factor is incentive to new ideas, encourages students to examine different aspects of a problem. Um, climate for expression of ideas creates an environment, the teacher creates an environment of respect and acceptance of students' ideas. Evaluation and teaching methodology the teacher always used the same teaching method. The teacher provides the students little choice about the assignments to be developed, invented for scoring. Interest for students' learning gives constructive feedback to students. It's available to meet students outside the classroom. And this instrument ha was constructed in three versions. One to be completed by the teacher. This instrument was validated with high education teachers and students. As a teacher of the subject, for example, introduction to psychology or other, it's my typical behavior in the classroom to cultivate in the students' interest in new discoveries and new knowledge, make challenging questions that motivate students to think and to reason. Challenging questions, this is very good. It's not easy, I tell you to have challenging questions sometimes. Stimulate students' in, uh, initiative, value students' original ideas. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, but there, there is also a version to be answered by the teacher as if the teacher was the student. According to my students in the subject, it's my typical behavior in the classroom. And we publish an article uh, with this instrument a few years ago in gifted and talent education. Yeah, I think. Well, I have to complete, finish. My time is, is I'm, I'm the uh, last instrument. Obstacles to personal creativity inventory. Well, I had more thousands and thousands of answers to the, I would be more creative if, 
In, the, in, more, than in, in uh, more than one country, the first study, the, uh, the students and the teachers, and the, they only completed. And we have so many answers that we constructed an instrument on the base uh, using this, that, those answers. It, uh, the obstacles to personal creativity inventory, uh, it has 66 items. And it, uh, uh, the validation studies indicated, uh, resulted in the following factors. Inhibition, inhibition, shyness. I would be more creative if I were less shy to express my ideas. I were not afraid to express what I think. Another factor, lack of time of, of in opportunity. I would be more creative if I had more opportunities to put in practice my ideas. Social repression, I would be more creative. I had not received a rigid education, lack of motivation. I would be more creative if I were more enthusiastic. We have a study with this instrument with data collected in um, Brazil and Mexico. It was published in the June of Creative Behavior few years ago, I think. Well, this is my last uh, slide. I would like to share with you our duty as teachers, as edu educators. All of us are educators. We don't need to be in a school, in a classroom, to be an educator. Um, as teachers, it is our duty to be a lighthouse in our students' lives helping them to uncover their creative potential, guiding them to develop most fully their potential in favor of themselves and of far most importance in society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eunice. We'd like to take questions uh, uh, in the written form, so... I, because I, 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 I understand what I read very well, but sometimes I have difficulties in, I, because I, I don't listen too much in English. That's why I asked uh, this favor to write just for me to understand exactly, not misunderstanding the, what you'd like in your questions. Languages and obstacles, unfortunately. I wish everybody would speak the same language. Oh, it would be great. Oh, it would be so nice. The books, we could read the books right, written in China. Oh, my goodness, in German, in Greece. Oh, I wish I could read all the languages. Oh. More questions? Somewhere. Nope. Okay. I learned only one word in the, in the language here. Talk. Talk. So all, all place I go, I say, talk, talk, talk. This is the only word that I learned. I try it, but they are so different. Oh, this is a good question. What do you think about the importance of creativity in bodily, kinesthetic, music, musical, and artistic talent kids? Well, it's of far most importance. Uh, it's very, very important. In my opinion, education is too focused in only in cognitive abilities. Sometimes I compare education, uh, at least in my country, with a young people who is doing exercise, and he, he, the person exercise only, for example, the, the muscle of, and the rest of the body doesn't develop. For example, music, dance, artist talent, should have a greater space 
in education, in my opinion. It would be very good if this happens. Well, this is a very, I, I would like also, this uh, maybe you could help me uh, doing what's written here. The question is, have you done any studies relating to the predictive validity of, of your instruments? We have some studies about concurrent validity, but not with predictive validity. If somebody here would like to participate in a team with us and to you know, use some of these, inst for example, the obstacles to personal creativity in a few years more later to use the same instrument, it would be great. I would be very uh, happy, glad, if this, delighted if this happens. Well, a call for collaboration. And a final question here. Oh, that's two questions, actually. I love Silvia. Silvia has all, all conference that I go, I see how <laughs> Silvia is wonderful. Uh, uh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Oh, well, uh, please, if I make a mis some mistakes, forg forgive me, because sometimes I, when I think in young children evaluating teachers' teaching skills, the children evaluate the, te the teachers. Oh, for, to evaluate teachers? Ah. Oh, but, uh, they, they, uh, okay. I well, saw okay. Uh, third and fourth graders were asked to evaluate whether they got opportunities to uh, ask enough questions and have choices. And, uh, and they're very young children, and uh, teachers are trying to teach them a lot of basic skills. And uh, it, it, I mean, is it, are they assumed to be doing creative work all the time? Uh, and uh -huh. I think that's pretty hard on teachers. Yes. And uh, the other part that I feel worried about is, I think most children are very happy in school. Um, and your, your picture of them being more bored, you know, some children are bored in school, but when I look at elementary classrooms, they seem happy, they're working. They're, yeah. uh, so I, I love creativity, but I, I, I feel worried that teachers um, teachers need encouragement too, and uh, I don't want to paint a, a I, I love the way you use teacher self-evaluations uh -huh. to ask them, but I, I don't want teachers to feel they're at the mercy of children who are on, who, who want it their way. Yeah, okay, thank you, very important. Yes. Well, the instrument that we presented in three formats, it's only for higher education, okay? It is not to be used in elementary school. It is for higher education. It was validated in, uh, with uh, teachers, uh, professors, and students more than one thousand uh, undergraduate students completed the instruments. Well, uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, in many classes, uh, teachers are too much pressed to do well, too much homework to do, too much things to learn, too much, too much to succeed in life. I, uh, I, in some, in some parts, this is middle classes, I'm saying middle classes, middle classes, private schools, uh, teachers, children, I, I, I have grandchildren, three years old and homework. My grandchildren, so many books that they, they go to school because, oh, I, so many, many books to read, so too much content. I would prefer, in my opinion, too much. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't agree that little children 
evaluate teachers, I, in my opinion. It, this is not fair. Thank you very much, Eunice. Mm. And we have a couple of presents for you here. Oh, this is great. I love, oh, I love Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy. And I the love. Oh, just a moment. My goodness. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm so, the people here, everybody is so kind. I was in Copenhagen. I was enchanted. Everybody. I, I have many questions because my spatial intelligence is not very good. When I ask, please help me. Everybody like to help me to find a place. It was great. Thanks a lot. You are great. Okay. Thank you for your work. Oh.